every young kid has a dream when he enters a gym. And there's a gym, uh, there's, there's a dream called as 21 in charms. Have you heard that? Anyone here had dreams of having 21 in charms? There's something magical about that figure, 21 in charms. Of course you had it. Have you heard You managed to win in 19, 20 together. 21 in charms. Was everybody's dream. Apparently, I think Kanu was 21 yeah. inches, or rather reported to be 21 inches in the magazine. Then I was like, who thinks I'm that I want 21 in charms? There are many, many women who have 21 in charms. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not muscle. <laughs> that's right. Seriously. You have the mouse coming to here, and then afterwards you suddenly have the screen. <laughs> a, a, a blouse that fits a, a three sizes, four sizes less blouse can fit only because slack can be squished. Now you're, why am I talking about this? Just to get details from you? No. Because you all need to understand the tissue muscle. You all need to understand how you all get fooled by trainers who just want to give you anything just to appease you. So you got women are conscious about fat in certain areas. Fat arms is the problem for about 20% of the women. Otherwise, for 80 percentile of women, where is the problem? Hips and thighs, correct? But for 20 percentile of the women, it is the upper body where they are cutting from fat. That depends on where the fat cells are more. Now that bearing the arms, in fitness, the earlier the woman was saying that she's got fat on her underarms. Okay, so she called it underarms. Then she became a gym member. And as a gym member, she realized these are called the spices. So now she says, my triceps are wet. My triceps don't have corn. Filled with estrogen, hardly any testosterone, 5 grams of protein going in the day. Where so much of triceps came? What is the muscle? I don't even know. So she had to be normally described as this Tata by my You know, it shakes a lot when they do this. It shakes a lot. So we tell the instructor, yeah, but I'll tell you what and you also feel good because oh, then you'll be able to This is the isolation triceps exercise, which has no bearing on your metabolism. It does nothing. And of course, you take a dumbbell which is uh, slightly heavier than your vitals. <laughs> And then I just keep on doing this business with these for revelations. Then you do 100 revelations. Why? Oh, today I'm here. Fat does not contract, fat does not work. That fat on your arms has got nothing to do with the triceps. It is not connected. In fact, you should invent your lower body workouts because the muscle size is larger, because the resultant damage will be more, the repair work will be more. Your metabolic rate will boost more through lower body workouts than through your upper body workouts. So in fact, your squats, which is difficult for you to understand. Why am I doing squats when I've come here for fat arms? You come here for excess fat. Wherever the fat is, it doesn't matter. Fat is a store of unused calories. It is inert. It does not work. Now you know, uh, anatomy or the science of anatomy also teaches us a few things. Uh, you all say thigh fat, hip fat, uh, abdominal fat. Science doesn't say that. Okay? I'll tell you what science says. That below the skin, there is muscle and fat everywhere. So I take this pointer and I point it to this area. Under the skin, in this area, is a muscle called as the pectoralis major. And under the skin, in this area, is fat tissue which is known as adipose tissue. Okay? So the label of muscle was what? Pectoralis major. The label of fat was what? Adipose tissue. Now we shift here. Under the skin, again, the label of the muscle will change. Right this abdominis. But the label of fat will still remain the same, which is adipose tissue. We shift the point here. The label of the muscle changes again to gluteus maximus. The label of fat remains the same, which is adipose tissue. We shift the point here. The label changes to forceps. The label of fat remains adipose tissue. What have you learned? That no matter where the pointer is, if you move the pointer, the name of the muscle will change. The shape of the muscle changes. The points of original insertion of the muscle change. Functions of the muscle are different. 
Every muscle is different. The deltoid muscle is different from the pectoralis. The biceps muscle is different from the deltoids. Every muscle is different. But fat, the properties of the fat remain the same, and hence no multiple names for fat here and fat there. Unlike the muscles, adipose tissue, adipose tissue, adipose tissue, adipose tissue, adipose tissue. No matter where the point of goes, it is adipose tissue. In simple terms, it is not thigh fat, it is body fat. It is not stomach fat, it is body fat. It is not chest fat, it is body fat. It is not abdomen fat, it is body fat. Fat belongs to the entire body. And it is your body's store of unused calories. And sometimes you could eat in such a way that you could be eating less than your requirement but still will be converted into fat. Most people who are fat are not poor eaters, are not big eaters. Now here, I try to draw to raise your hands and tell me, out of this whole crowd here, how many of you all feel that God has been unjust to you, that you don't overeat, but your damn fat keeps on increasing? How many of you all believe that? That it just may be true. When you look at a when you look at a fat person, what is the thought that goes on in your mind? Damn, but he must be eating a lot. Must be eating all day. When you look at an extremely thin person, what thought goes on in your mind? Must be starving. So when you see a couple, uh, very fat wife and very thin husband, they make jokes like right? something must be eating. She must be doing it. She's starving and eating all day. We have we have stereotypes in our head. Right? The 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 fat guys eat a lot. And the thing I think I can't eat. But here, let me tell you one thing that the fat people are not big eaters. Some very, very fat women have sat with and have taken on the dietary call, and they are hardly at 800 calories per day. They will have some two madam and one kaju and one half glass of milk for breakfast, some samzi and one frita, ita chota frita, and something. And actually, if you see the, their uh, food, and I've seen the meat also sometimes on a thali. The amount of food they have, uh, I eat more pickle than that. My achar is more. Then the amount of vegetables that she'll take, or the amount of uh, uh, this thing, uh, some lentils she'll have. So overall quantity is up low. Sometimes I eat, sometimes I don't eat, I skip it, if possible. So when you calculate the calories, hardly an 800 calories, 900 calories, what do you want to reduce? So there are many like that, who eat very less, but constantly, year after year, are putting up weight. Another question that I want to ask her, how many of you all know in your friends and you, in your relatives, in your um, surroundings, how many of you all are aware of a, such a person who seems to be blessed, but may not be blessed, he seems to be blessed because you think it's a blessing, but that person eats everything and anything. There is no control over what he eats. Some men this appetite, but is always Do you all know such people? All of you all know such people? So can we take it for granted that since all of you know such people, that there are many people like that? So one thing to move out of your mind that is about some intake of calories that is making people fat. There are enough people on this planet who are eating very less, but are massive. And there are enough people on this planet who eat a lot, but are thin. So there goes the whole theory about excess calories and less calories and all of that. It is the type of food that is causing a problem and also, apart from the type of food causing a problem, it is also about the person's intrinsic metabolic rate. I have said metabolic rate a lot, let's understand what metabolic rate is. What is metabolic rate? To understand metabolic rate, you almost have heard of BMI, no? Basal metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate. Okay. I want you to not only understand the abbreviations and the full forms of the abbreviations, but actually understand the concept clearly. Basal metabolic rate, let me tell you right now, is the key, is the magic key to fat loss. The only way you can lose fat is by speeding up your metabolism, okay, and at the same time forcing the body to use stored fat as energy. Now, how are you going to do that? First of all, understand what the basal metabolic state is. Because the basal metabolic rate is a rate of calorie consumption. But it is a rate of calorie consumption during what we call as the basal metabolic state. So what is the basal metabolic state? Some people even call it the resting metabolic state. Okay? But we rest only after we die. There is no rest for the human body. The musculoskeletal system you know of? What is the musculoskeletal system? How many of you know? 
That's what you want to say. That's your muscular skeletal system. Okay? When the muscular skeletal system is at rest, we are told to be at the basal metabolic state. You get it? So, right now, I am not in the basal metabolic state, but relatively, y'all are in the basal metabolic state. Y'all are sitting in the same. Though the ultimate basal metabolic state would be definitely sleeping. Okay? But for uh, convenience, and also to understand, also to uh, uh, give you importance, we are going to include a lot of times during the day when we are going to be in basal metabolic state. Not just the eight hours of sleeping, but we are also going to include the eight hours of office work that we do, which is also sedentary. Um, anybody here taking stones for a living? Anybody? No, no. So let's not talk about that. Correct? So nobody is breaking stones here for a living. Everybody goes to office. Right? It works. So we are sedentary. So eight hours of working, eight hours of sleeping. It's 16 hours. Eight hours uh, around. Two hours of motorized travel is what I would include into our urban lives. Okay, uh, yes, I, and number one, uh, that's another thing that you should know, I'm a specialist in urban lifestyle. So the reason why I clarify all this is because it's an exposed to when we talk about what about the farmer who's uh, uh, plowing the field. But I'm not talking about gym members. And as my demographic that I'm treating all that are the people who go through motorized travel. Okay, and so two hours of motorized travel. So if you make 16 hours plus two hours of motorized travel, that's 18 hours. Right? Then uh, at least two hours of relaxing at home if you need to sleep or watching TV. Fair enough? So that's 20 hours. Right? Out of 24 hours, you are in the basal metabolic state for 20 hours. So the quantum of time that we spend in basal metabolic state is a lot more than activity. The rest of the four hours accounts for some stair climbing you may have done to climb some floors somewhere. Some travel you may have done to go to the bus stop or to the train stop or wherever or catch a rickshaw, whatever you may have done. Cumulatively, anything and everything that you walk or lifted during the day could be in those four hours. And if you're a gym goer, then yes, one, one and a half hour or even two hours out of those four hours could be inside the gym when you are considered to be above the basal metabolic state. Basal is the lowest level of activity that your body would do. And the question here is, if you're lying down, sleeping, what work is the body doing? Finally, we all know that when we work, and only when we work, we require calories. And people also know that we should burn calories. You might be surprised to know that I actually subscribe to the philosophy that without burning of calories, you cannot lose fat. But that doesn't mean that you worry about the amount of calories that you burn during the one, two hours of working out. The amount of calories that you burn throughout the rest of the 20 hours is what will determine whether you lose fat or whether you gain fat with the same kind of and so you need something to spike the metabolism. If you want to become even halfway as much as a person who can eat everything and still not put on fat, your metabolism needs to increase. Now metabolism will do what? Metabolism is a process of life. It's got two parts. Anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism is built up, catabolism is break down. Both of them together form metabolism, process of life. Now when you're sleeping, what work are you doing? Because you should only consider musculoskeletal activity to be work. So if you see somebody walking, then you ask the person the question, are you burning calories? He says yes. 